Earth observation from space allows us to view Earth in a completely different way, helping us to better understand our planet. For example, data provided by the Sentinel-3A satellite is used to measure the changing amounts of chlorophyll in vegetation, thus visualizing the progress of spring greening in the Northern Hemisphere. Launched in 2016, the Sentinel-3A satellite gathers data on land cover, vegetation health, and the oceans. Its unique information is already the source for several services on the ground within Copernicus, the European Commission's program for monitoring Earth. The Sentinel-3 mission is actually quite a versatile mission in the sense that it um, serves um, a large variety of different Copernicus services. So we're not just um, working with the marine environment service, we're also working with the land, with the atmosphere and with the climate service. Uh, there's a large variety of data that we can actually supply. The marine service is probably the most um, developed for the moment. It's already using data over the ocean, in particular the ocean color data, which tells us something about the marine ecosystem, about the health of the sea and um, can basically also predict something like har harmful uh, algal blooms. Soon these services will be further enhanced as Sentinel-3B will join its twin brother Sentinel-3A on polar orbit. Depending on the instrument, the pair of Sentinel-3 satellites will provide global coverage every two days, with data available for users in near real time. Sentinel-3 primarily focuses on our oceans. It measures the temperature, color, and height of the sea surface, as well as sea ice thickness. These measurements are needed to study changes in sea level, marine pollution, and biological productivity. Sentinel-3A has already yielded interesting results. We learned a lot. We have scientists working in Europe and all over in the international uh, uh, operational laboratories as well as uh, the research institutes using satellite data from Sentinel-3 uh, together with other instruments on other satellites to address a whole variety of different questions. For example, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, Sentinel-3 sea and land surface radiometer uh, is, using, is providing us with the best sea surface temperatures in the world and these uh, are helping us to understand coral ble bleaching. And together with the ULCHI instrument, we can look at the ocean color uh, and how the, uh, the, the marine productivity is responding to changes in the climate. Sentinel-3 is the most complex of all Sentinel missions, carrying no less than four instruments that work in synergy. The sea and land surface temperature radiometer, the ocean and land color instrument, a dual frequency synthetic aperture radar altimeter, and dual channel microwave radiometer. The Sentinel-3 mission is a collaboration between ESA, the European Commission, and UMETSAT, the European Organization for the Exploitation of Meteorological Satellites. The mission is jointly managed by ESA and UMETSAT, with ESA processing the land products for Copernicus services and UMETSAT the marine products. Being an operational mission, Sentinel-3 will last at least until 2040. So ESA is already preparing the future with new Sentinel-3 satellites. So A and now B will, will be in space uh, soon. The C and D model, which are replica of this one, are under manufacturing now and will be completed uh, by the end of the decade. And they are expected to be launched in the 2023-24 time frame to cover basically the Sentinel-3 mission until 2030. But already now we are starting working on the next Sentinel-3 generation, we call the next generation, which is supposed to take over this mission after 2030. Whether it's monitoring forest fires blazing through California, watching hurricanes develop in the ocean, or sensing the Earth's heat, the Sentinel-3 mission has already provided a wealth of data and imagery to Copernicus, the most ambitious Earth observation program to date. And with Sentinel-3B soon on orbit, this wealth can only increase.